All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, depending on where you're connecting from. Uh, welcome to yet another exclusive Citrix Ready technical webinar, uh, where we showcase how Citrix and our partners uh, like Pure Storage have integrated to deliver valuable products and solutions uh, to common problems faced by our customers. Uh, today we'll be talking uh, to our Citrix Ready partner, Pure Storage, and uh, one of our joint customers, Hub International, to see uh, why the right infrastructure for mobile workspace is so much critical. Uh, I'm Anil Kumar, your host today, and uh, I'm a part of the Citrix Ready technical marketing team uh, leading the network ecosystem. Uh, I have about eight years of experience in, in total, and I've been uh, with Citrix for the past uh, couple of years now. Uh, prior to Citrix, uh, I was into Citrix administration working for uh, Fujitsu and HP. Uh, where I had the opportunity to manage uh, some medium and large scale Citrix infrastructures. Uh, along with me today, I have uh, Kyle Grossmiller, uh, Solutions Architect at uh, Pure Storage. Oh, hey, Kyle, uh, welcome you uh, to this technical webinar. Uh, could you uh, introduce a bit about yourself, please? Sure thing, Anil, and thank you, and thanks everybody else for joining. Um, my name is Kyle. Uh, I'm a VDI solutions architect here at Pure Storage. I've been with Pure for about a little over two years now, um, and prior to that, I was with Lockheed Martin Space Systems for about 14 years uh, as an engineer and a few other functions, probably most uh, relative to this being a VDI technical lead uh, for Lockheed Martin Space Systems, so definitely have some good uh, war stories from the trenches and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Great, Th thanks very much Kyle. Hello, uh, we, we also have uh, Amir Hamad from uh, Hub International. Uh, he's the Director for Service Delivery and Transformation at Hub International. Uh, hi Amir, welcome to the webinar. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, could, could you also give us a, a bit introduction about yourself please? Definitely, hello Neil. Hello everyone else, uh, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time zone you are coming from. Um, yeah, so I have been with Hub for about six plus years. Um, I've been in IT for about 21 years. My background is in the Unix storage uh, virtualization arena and uh, currently my role is uh, managing all the infrastructure platforms uh, uh, for Hub International. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, that includes uh, Citrix, VDI, uh, plus also a host of other technologies, infrastructure, um, and networking, telecommunication, and all of that stuff. So look forward to um, reviewing our uh, case study with you guys, and if you have any questions, I'll look forward to those two later on. Thank you. Th thanks very much, Amr, and, and welcome once again. Thank you. Uh, Kyle, if we could uh, move to the next slide, please. All right. Uh, so, so before we move on, uh, let, let's talk a bit about Citrix Ready, uh, since, since this is a Citrix Ready uh, technical webinar. Uh, so Citrix Ready is a uh, technology partner program uh, that showcases and recommends third-party products, uh, solutions, and services that demonstrate uh, compatibility with Citrix's products. Uh, customers can quickly and easily find solutions uh, recommended by Citrix and the Citrix Ready Marketplace, and uh, that that's hosted at uh, citrixready.com. Sorry, citrixready.citrix.com. And uh, if you'd like to uh, learn more about our program, if you have a solution or a product to validate with us, uh, please visit our uh, partner program page uh, at uh, citrix.com forward slash partner programs. Uh, Citrix Ready, and there uh, you'll, you'll find uh, all the information to join the program, how to validate the product, and the various technical and marketing benefits which we offer. All right, and in terms of uh, the agenda today, uh, uh, we, we have, uh, we always love talking to our partners and, and customers, and, and I think we have, we definitely have uh, a very interesting session lined up today. Uh, we will see how uh, how to reduce uh, the risk of deployment and, and scaling in mobile workspaces and, and how uh, pure storage's uh, flash stack, uh, which, which is a converged infrastructure, can, can really help in this space. Uh, as, as, we, uh, as I introduced uh, Amer, uh, Amer is going to talk about uh, Hub International and how 
and and have uh, using uh, how they use pure storage flash stack to uh, uh, mitigate some of the uh, uh, some of the VDI slowness and uh, and application slowness issues. Uh, and at and at the end, I'll I'll take over again to uh, talk about how how we use flash, how we can use flash stack uh, as an on on premise data store for uh, share file data. All right, so uh, so without any further ado, let me hand it over to our first speaker for today. Uh, just just one housekeeping item: uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, please uh, use the question panel available uh, at the right hand side. Uh, we'll we'll try and address them uh, during uh, either during the webinar or at the end uh, in the question and answer session. All right, so uh, hi Kyle, uh, it's all yours. Please please take over. Great. All right. Thank you very much, Neil. So yeah, today let's let's talk a little bit about FlashStack first. FlashStack is, is as you mentioned, our converged infrastructure solution. It's our partnership uh, with Cisco to basically offer Cisco Nexus switches, uh, UCS servers, as well as pure storage, providing the all flash array storage layer. Um, one of the really neat things about it is that you can start very small with a FlashStack Mini. Uh, FlashStack Mini is a UCS chassis, a 5108 chassis with the uh, 6324 fabric interconnects actually plugged into the back of that chassis. So, you know, it's very dense, very fast, and you're able to fit probably over a thousand users on that little flash tech mini uh, to the left there, which is just crazy dense uh, and, and a very competitive and good uh, price point for entry. And as you scale, you can non-disruptively scale up your flash deck environment to use more discrete fabric interconnects MDS switches and, and all of that other good stuff as you continue to grow and add scope uh, to your environment. Um, so before we get too deep into FlashDeck, I wanted to uh, just quickly touch on, you know, this is what the typical IT project lifestyle looks like. You know, this is this is where I, where I came from at Lockheed Martin. Um, you know, and, and, and let's be honest, there's a lot of steps here. Um, there's a lot of room for error, and there's a lot of room for wasted time and effort as you move on from step to step, right? Um, integrating different point solutions uh, in order to get to your end state goal is, is very difficult and, and time consuming. Um, so, you know, what we can do with a converged infrastructure solution is, is really take out uh, a large number of those steps, right? So basically, you initiate the project, you size and scale it because uh, Cisco, Citrix, and Pure Storage have already done the work to pre-validate these uh, designs for you, particularly for, in this instance, for Citrix and Desktop or ShareFile. I'll share a little bit more uh, about that in just a minute. Um, you can see just the number of steps in your IT project are dropped dramatically. So, you know, once you get the environment stood up, you, you move from, you know, constantly adding pieces and having to validate new pieces of the design to instead more of a uh, O&M, operations and management type of deployment. So, you know, simply add additional capacity to the pure storage array, perhaps swap out a controller. Um, by the way, with pure storage, we have a program called Evergreen Storage, which basically enables you to get our latest and greatest controllers uh, for free every three years, so long as you are under a maintenance contract. So, um, you know, this, this, and Cisco, of course, UCS is also stateless infrastructure, so you're able to upgrade to more performant blade servers as time goes on uh, without disrupting your end users. And uh, you can do it middle of the day, no downtime uh, whatsoever. Um, finally, I just thought I'd touch on one more time uh, in terms of the flash stack components. Um, you know, obviously pure storage, uh, I'm a little biased because I work there, but <laughs> providing all flash performance uh, to your VDI users, to your VDI customers is absolutely important. You know, uh, delivering them that sub millisecond latency, uh, despite driving tens of thousands of IOPS and bandwidth across the array is, is one, of the very one of the very critical components in order to uh, ensure a highly performant uh, end user experience. Um, and again, you know, I think that uh, coming from from where I came from, you know, the the unexpected storage outage, right? So so pure storage has six nines of verified uptime, so that's 99.9999% uptime, and that includes things like firmware upgrades, capacity expansions, 
generational product upgrades. Um, so, you know, basically being able to do those types of operations in the middle of the workday and your end users will, will never know that, that, you know, you just did a, a, a entire code upgrade to the array is, is very powerful. And, and we see that again and again in our customer base, just transforming their business and allowing them to no longer have to work week, nights and weekends to do those types of operations. Um, in terms of Citrix, obviously, I think uh, most folks on this call are very familiar with them, but, you know, they deliver an outstanding uh, suite of applications for both the desktop user as well as uh, your file services and, and uh, user uh, settings and user profiles. Um, and just that ability to dynamically assign and schedule resources as well is, is very important. And then, of course, Cisco. You know, Cisco uh, UCS is a, a powerful uh, uh, blade-based technology. Um, I'll get into some of the work that we've done specifically here on, on the next slide um, just to talk more about that. Um, so you can see this is a there is a program called the Cisco Validated Design or CVD. Um, this came out I believe in December of this past year but what we did is we basically built a 5,000 seat Citrix Zen desktop and Zen app uh, deployment from the ground up. The neat thing about these documents is that they're probably six to seven hundred pages in length total and they include every screenshot, uh, every configuration tweak, every best practice for every component of the design. So if you literally start reading it from page one and have all this equipment laying around, you could build this entire flash stack just by reading this guide. So we do this in order to provide customers, you know, with a referenceable stack that we that uh, both comp that all companies will stand behind and support. Um, another nice benefit of FlashStack is that you basically have a single uh, line of support to call, so one throat to choke, as they say. So if any component uh, goes down, you know, you can, you can call Pure, you can call your, your FlashStack certified partner and have that single line of support uh, to help you get through any issues that you might have. Um, I think the other really neat thing here as well that I would mention is that you'll notice that every component uh, in this design is fully redundant. So you can maintain 100% uh, performance through failure if an MBS switch goes down or if you need to upgrade the firmware on it or something like that. Uh, again, you're, you're able to basically maintain user uptime without uh, taking an outage in order to do uh, common data center administrative tasks. Um, one other thing to mention quickly about Pure Storage here is that uh, we did use 16 gigabyte fiber channel. Uh, Pure Storage Flash Array M is a block storage device, so we support 16 gigabyte fiber channel as well as 10 gigabyte iSCSI um, for, for your block storage needs. Um, so getting into the CVD, um, but th this is the test process that we went through. So, you know, 5,000 is definitely that hero number, and while we certainly tested it, I think another neat uh, component of it is that, you know, that's, that's the, the highest size that we went to. If, if you have a smaller deployment, um, we basically start with single server scalability testing. Uh, we use the B200M4 UCS server. Uh, we, it, within this design, we used uh, both Citrix Zen app on Windows uh, Server 2012, uh, as well as Zen Desktop uh, with Windows 10. Um, this is the first Cisco validated design I'm aware of that used the Windows 10 operating system. And as you can imagine, it's definitely a little bit more resource intensive than previous versions. So this will give you reliable uh, uh, performance metrics that you can use when you when you scale and size it. Um, this was basically tested using a tool called Login BSI. Uh, Login BSI is the industry standard VDI benchmarking tool and it very uh, it's a script based tool that that essentially does a, a pretty good job I must say of modeling what uh, standard you know users or knowledge workers uh, would do in a day-to-day -day, uh, operations things like launching the office suite uh, of course going to YouTube and watching videos very important uh, zipping files uh, printing the PDF so very you know kind of typical uh, user tasks in order to put load against this environment um, anyway moving along once we uh, figured out the single server kind of number that we were comfortable with, you know, uh, the number of users that we could run on a single server. We then moved up to cluster level testing. So with ZenApp, we did 2,600 RDS-based sessions. Uh, then we did 1,200 uh, MCS-based non-persistent users, and then 1,200 uh, PVS-based persistent users, just to kind of show that, that mixed mode of, of all of the Zen desktop offerings within uh, within the single uh, validated design. 
From there, we went up to all 5,000 users at scale and tested them with login VSI. Um, and then, you know, we so that was pretty good, but we decided not to stop there. So, for, so we went a little further and did uh, 5,000 user resiliency testing. So basically, we took uh, that 5,000 user test, got them running in steady state, and then performed a, a flash, a pure storage uh, firmware upgrade right in the middle of that just to, you know, prove uh, independently with login VSI that there was no user downtime uh, whatsoever uh, during that operation. Um, this is the login VSI results from that 5,000 seat uh, run. So you can see that blue line is basically the normalized score of the login VSI run. Um, and it basically, and so login VSI is a ramp test. So it starts with zero users and then by the end of, I believe it's 48 minutes, uh, and then it steady states for about 12 minutes after that, you have 5,000 users all actively running against this infrastructure. Uh, that response time on the left is in milliseconds. So what that shows us is that, you know, the average response time for an end for all end users on the environment was right around a second, which is really, really, this is a very compelling, very good score. You can see the login VSI baseline score there on the lower right shows that you know, we were in that very good login VSI category. And again, login VSI is an independent company, so uh, these are independently verified results. Um, the red line across the top, that VSI threshold, is what login VSI would consider to be a bad end user experience. And as you can see, the blue line comes nowhere near that. Uh, so that's, that's indicative of a, of a very compelling good end user experience with the, within this environment. I should add, too, that everything was built to be N plus 1 or N plus 2 availability throughout. So if you lose something, the user experience, the blue line might move up a little bit, but it's not going to cross into that, you know, red line threshold area. Um, last slide for me. Uh, this is what the pure storage uh, uh, metrics look like during that 5,000 user run. So basically, we were able to start uh, 2,480 2, virtual desktops in about 20 minutes. As you can see, we we're driving a substantial amount of read IOPS during that. A, a bootstorm is a very read intensive operation, so we were pushing about 1.75 gigs a second, uh, but still maintaining sub millisecond latency. And then uh, the orange block, you can see that was our actual 5,000 uh, desktop session launch window. We steady stated it for about uh, 12 minutes, and then sessions begin to log out. And again, just to reiterate, um, we're driving a lot of bandwidth and IOPS against this array, but we are maintaining that sub millisecond latency uh, throughout the entire simulation. And that's, that's what enables us to maintain that outstanding uh, login VSI score throughout. Uh, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Amir because I can talk, you know, about things in the lab all day, but <laughs> Amir is actually out there in the field and doing this in real life. So I think he's, his story is a lot more compelling than what I just shared. So, Amir, uh, let me hand it over to you, please. Thank you very much. Um, I think I've already given my little bit of introduction uh, earlier. Uh, and as I said, I've been with Hub for about six years. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, certainly. So do you want the about us or do you want... Oops, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm fine. So Hub International is a uh, is a growing business. We are insurance brokerages. Uh, we are the eighth largest uh, brokerage insurance brokerage in the world. We have about 10,000 employees, a revenue of 1.47 as of last year. We have 450 offices in North America, including Puerto Rico, and we are headquartered in Chicago. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, actually there's a slide before this one. No, I'm good with it, thanks. So this is just a sort of an overview of what our Citrix environment or the BDI environment that, you know, uh, looks for us. Um, we've been running, you know, published desktop um, using Zen app before we went to BDI. We did it for, you know, six years or more. Uh, we, you know, there were some limiting factors that, that, that we were at Zen app for this long. Um, we had a density of uh, 8 to 10 users. We tried to use more, 
um, at a higher density, but then we ran into issues and problems with certain applications uh, and the shared workload. So we decided to just keep it at 8 to 10. We, um, you know, and so, you know, as some of you who are aware of, you know, limitations of Senap published desktop, uh, you can clearly understand that we were constantly running into issues and problems with, you know, with you having a user or two on a desktop that they may be, you know, taking over a lot of uh, uh, resources. We were not able to sort of uh, layer our applications and all the stuff. But the biggest of, of them all was the performance. Uh, it was an unpredictable performance um, because we were running our, you know, sort of legacy uh, spinning this uh, storage and all the stuff. And, you know, as you can imagine that as we are a growing company, we ran into some issues and problems with, with our previous storage. So that's when we started looking out and saying, okay, we need to change the technology from Zen app to Zen desktop. And then when we are doing that uh, journey, we also need to uh, look at our infrastructure and see what are the components that are the best of the breed that can provide a good experience to our end users. And so that's where we started doing the migration. It took about a year, um, you know, of actual 12-month um, time to migrate about, you know, 7,500 users uh, from Zen app to Zen desktop. Uh, this is the time when we sort of, you know, uh, went with uh, UCS as our compute platform and pure storage as our, um, and, you know, um, block storage uh, platform. And you know, during the whole transition, you know, it's it was pretty smooth from the infrastructure perspective uh, and from the storage perspective. What we bought pure storage for, those expectations were met and above. Um, we, you know, uh, because we wanted a platform that you sort of, you know, put it over there and you don't have to worry about sort of matching the spinning disk uh, to the sort of performance that you need and all that stuff. Um, so VDI users in our environment, they represent about 90% of our total um, uh, user base. And we uh, decided about five, six years ago that we need to go into the work virtualization path. And we have been virtualizing almost everything. There's nothing that we don't virtualize. So we are at about 99.9% .9 virtualized, uh, running VMware vSphere 5.1 and 5.5. Actually, our VDI environment runs in 5.5. Um, so that's, you know, that's our current uh, VDI uh, infrastructure, what it looks like. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so as I, I think, um, alluded to in the last slide, too, that, you know, we had problems with our slow, slow uh, boot store times. We had slow login, logout times. It ranged from two to four minutes. Sometimes it could go even uh, higher, depending on the user and the density already exists, existing on the um, published uh, Zen app desktop. We had scalability issues that, you know, as I alluded to before, that to add more performance, to, add, to be able to gain uh, um, lower latencies, uh, for higher IOPS, uh, that was always a sort of a capacity planning issue where you're always adding more capacity just to get, you know, sort of lower latency and possibly um, and be able to sustain higher uh, IOPS during the uh, VDS session during business times. Um, our other challenges were like, you know, because it's a shared desktop in Zen app, so one user or two users can trip all the other users based on what they're doing. And so now you all of a sudden, rather than having one or two users having performance issues, you've got seven to 10 users who are perform having performance issues. Um, and then last bullet point I wanna highlight is that we had, because of the, the way we did in Zen app, we had a lot of images because we have sort of different combinations of applications and those all of those applications were locally installed on those, um, on those uh, uh, published desktop images. And that was another reason for us to go to VDI is not to be able to sort of, uh, you know, give our end users a better performance, uh, a better experience uh, to, during login times and throughout their uh, uh, workday, but also be able to minimize and reduce the number of 
images uh, by applying technologies like Apti uh, and um, and where needed uh, doing uh, Zen app. But you know the technologies like Apti provided us sort of a virtualized um, way of uh, providing the application to the desktop. But um, it also allowed it so that it is invisible to the user if how they interact and they seem to the end user as being locally installed. Next slide, please. So this is just the components that we purchased. Um, you know, pure storage M70, Cisco uh, UCS uh, B200, M3s, and M4s because we started it about two years ago. So we started with M3s, but now M4 is our standard platform from the compute perspective, and we are using Citrix Zen app and Zen desktop 7.6. 7 uh, 7 Next slide, please. Okay, so um, uh, again, you know, as, as um, you know, as I've talked about this sort of journey in, in going into VDI, it really improved our end user login times. Where it used to be a constant struggle, we used to get a lot of complaints about that. You know, it takes me this long to log in and all the stuff. We reduced it from two was two minutes was on the low end to about 42 seconds. That is a sort of every day we sort of measured this, the login times, and it, it sort of stays uh, 42 seconds, 37 seconds, and it ranges in that, in that, um, uh, in that bucket. But, uh, you know, it has really, it, it, you know, we could not have asked for a better platform and better uh, storage that could sustain um, and sort of large amount of users who are logging in in any given day. Um, you know, we have users from in north to south, but uh, primarily from east coast to west coast. So all the, during the day, we've got people who are logging in and logging out, but the big storm of, you know, um, end users are logging in throughout the day, up until like noon time, and then at about three o'clock, they're logging out that's when we are uh, rebooting the VDI. So we're constantly doing you know, all of this stuff by, while still preserving uh, the user experience that our users have now come to uh, expect from the VDI platform. Um, business benefits were like a reduced footprint um, uh, from the storage side. Uh, we, we have like about three full racks. We have three full racks of uh, storage dedicated to the block side. Uh, probably two of them were for like a VDIs or the Zen app in the old, and now we have about less than half of a single rack um, that we are, uh, you know, uh, for the pure storage, which is dedicated to uh, VDI. Um, and you know, with with the pure storage, it made the capacity planning that much easier, where we necessarily don't have to keep adding capacity just to sustain certain sort of performance levels. Uh, we now focus more on, okay, what our um, capacity needs are from the size perspective, and that's what we are adding to it um, as we grow and we bring in more business through our acquisitions. Um, IT benefits, um, you know, as you can see over here, the simplicity of it. So when we were comparing uh, pure storage platform with other platforms, it was basically what we were looking for, simple to use, simple to integrate, and it needs to have an excellent support. As I said before, our, on our existing platform, our legacy platform that was all spinning this, high-end spinning this and all that stuff, but we you know, it was it was you needed a sort of a degree in in in, in storage to be able to run uh, that platform, and so you still you know sometimes would would fall short because you you sort of did not really understand the uh, inside workings of the storage. With Pure, we we have been using it for more than two years now. We have knock on wood. We have, you know, we have not had any issues with support. We have not had any issues with configuration. We have not had any issues with doing maintenance, or we have not had any issues with uh, doing any sort of upgrades. You know, I think uh, it was mentioned before. You can do a upgrade uh, during the uh, middle of the day. It, it unfortunately it come came a time when we needed to add, um, you know, extra capacity. 
and it was in the middle of the hour work days, about 10.30 central time. Uh, people came and they attached a new, you know, um, a shelf and it was just like, you know, all of a sudden you saw the lights blinking and, uh, and the new capacity was up and running in maybe three minutes, um, if not even less. So uh, we, you know, we, we think that we have made the right decision and it has uh, the, 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 uh, um, the, the sort of um, things that, you know, our targets that we wanted to meet with our new platform uh, from the storage perspective, that we were able to meet those uh, with the pure storage. Uh, next one, please. So here are the, some of the lessons learned um, and the best practices. Um, I think it was also mentioned before the login BSI. Uh, so we did use login BSI when, when we were going through the engineering cycle. We just wanted to make sure uh, that we can sustain higher level of uh, bootstorms and, uh, and, and login times and uh, number of users uh, for the capacity that we were looking into. Uh, but that also sort of gave us some sort of indication that when we are doing um, capacity planning from the compute perspective or something, how many of those desktops we can put on a single uh, blade. Uh, and that also gave us the indication of how uh, much we can push, um, you know, our pure storage. If I recall it correctly, I don't think we found any breaking point when we were doing um, uh, 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 when we were doing the um, uh, login BSI testing uh, before we uh, purchased the pure storage. Um, you know, as I alluded before, we have about 8,000 users, about nine, nine to 10,000 actual VM desktop, but we have about 8,000 users that log into it every single day. And those users, when a user log out, so it does a power action and it reboots the machine at that time. So you can imagine when East Coast is going offline, you have hundreds and thousands of machines that are rebooting at that time, while our West Coast or Mountain, you know, uh, users are still working uh, without noticing any any uh, reduction in their performance. Um, another thing you also want to be sort of keep an eye on is the Citrix profiles. Um, um, you know, where are you putting them? Uh, how are you accessing them? Because uh, that has a lot to do uh, with uh, the, also with the login times and all the stuff too. Uh, how, how fast you can sort of load them into your uh, desktop image. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier, that we use the provisioning uh, services, Citrix provisioning services to create all of our desktop and maintain them um, on a daily basis. I think this is my last slide, if I'm not wrong. All right. Yeah. That, that, that's correct, Emmer. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. Th thanks very much, Emmer. Uh, I mean, I, I certainly feel that, that we had pure storage back in the days when, uh, uh, the, when, when I was administering uh, Citrix infrastructure for some, uh, for some banking companies. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I mean, all, all the... Uh, all the issues which you mentioned about the slow logons, the application performance, and I, I, I'm sure uh, uh, working with the pure pure storage flash stack and, and Citrix uh, and, and migrating to Citrix, Zen Desktop has uh, clearly improved the performance, the user experience uh, for, for Hub International. Th thanks very much once again for, for sharing the, those great insights. I'm sure uh, it really helps um, the audience today and, and, and who, whoever will be uh, listening to the webinar later on. Excellent. All right, so, so no problem. Just, just uh, before we move on, a couple of questions. Uh, so, 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 uh, so, so you already mentioned uh, about the uh, advantages you had uh, in terms of the hardware. Uh, where where it, where it's uh, where it has reduced the rack space from uh, more more than four to five racks to just uh, uh, just half the rack, uh, but but I would like to know how uh, uh, how do you uh, uh, have you had to perform any maintenance on the hardware at all, and and if yes, uh, how was that experience? Uh, 
So, you know, uh, one just a small correction, it was like uh, about three racks of uh, block storage that we had, and then we went to like less than half a half a rack of that storage. Um, you know, as you know, I gave the example of the uh, sto uh, maintenance where we had to add the capacity in the middle of our work busy workday, uh, right. and that went flawless. Uh, we do uh, we do uh, uh, try to make sure that our uh, code versions on our uh, uh, pure storage uh, remains up to date, uh, and and those are you know um, happen probably every quarter. Um, and and so far we've not had any issues or problems. Um, and you know one of the other things that you know I sort of mentioned before about uh, support is that there are many times we are getting a call because one of the things you get from Pure is that there is somebody who's at Pure who's getting the logs and details and, and performance metrics and all the stuff from your storage uh, every I believe um, thirty seconds or um, uh, five minutes or so. And so they are keeping an eye on it. Every time we have done any maintenance, Pure has been there with us on the phone. They are doing all the work. They are always prepared. They're always knowledgeable and things like that. So, you know, it's been a good experience from the support perspective. Um, and, um, you know, maintenance has been a still a, 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 quite a breeze. All right. So, sounds sounds uh, awesome, uh, Aymer. And, and yes, customer support is, is always very important. and. Uh, uh, and, and upgrading uh, a block storage in, in just under three minutes great, greatly helps. And, and uh, Pure, Pure has always been a, a great partner to us as well. Uh, having, uh, we, we do have a lot of pleasure working with them. All right. So, so thank, thanks, Emer. Uh, so, uh, so let me uh, let me take over from here and uh, quickly explain uh, how uh, we kind of used uh, the flash stack. Uh, pure storage flash stack to uh, validate uh, validate it as a data store for uh, Citrix share file. <clears throat> All right, so uh, if, if you're not familiar with what uh, share file is, uh, so what you see is, is a 50,000 foot view uh, representation of it. Right, so uh, so ShareFile is uh, is an enterprise uh, file sync and share cloud cloud based solution. Uh, it consists of uh, what we traditionally called uh, call it as the application tire or or the control plane. Um, you you could see at the top, and uh, uh, and and the control plane provides uh, the interface and and the basic logic that drives uh, the user experience. Uh, ShareFile also consists of uh, storage options and, and what is called the storage zones. Uh, you, you could see at the bottom. Uh, these storage zones can be uh, purely cloud-based uh, through a Citrix managed storage zone. Uh, it could be a customer managed storage zone uh, using an on-premise data repository uh, via SIFS or SMB file share. Uh, a customer managed managed storage zone uh, utilizing an existing uh, data container uh, like uh, let's say Azure, or or even better a hybrid a hybrid approach uh, that utilizes a combination of all of them. So so a lot of uh, options uh, given to the customer or, or the enterprise to uh, choose where where do you want to uh, store your data. So if I have to uh, sum up both, uh, the application tire provides uh, a consistent, consistent user experience across devices, uh, while the different uh, storage zone options provides uh, flexibility in how you store uh, your data. So, uh, so why, uh, so why would you use uh, an on-premise uh, storage zones option? Uh, why would you want to store uh, data in your own data center or or your customer managed storage zones? Uh, so, so the reasons are uh, the reasons could be many, uh, but but some of the main ones I'd like to highlight as uh, 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 enterprises would would like to meet privacy and uh, compliance requirements imposed by IT uh, to restrict sensitive data uh, moving out of the data center. Uh, healthcare, for example, where uh, files containing critical patient information, or or even in finance sector where customer information of uh, high priority uh, needs instant access at all times, 
so, so some of these use cases would want uh, uh, keeping these files on premise in the same network. And, and that becomes a necessity and it also uh, uh, reduces the latency when, when moving large files. Uh, also, uh, also organizations would have uh, heavily invested in on-premise storage and, and would like to uh, make full use of the investment. And, and, and many more reasons, but, but ShareFile does not restrict customers, uh, but, but leaves the choice to the customer to choose what best suits their uh, environment. So, uh, so Kyle already explained uh, the various advantages uh, Amer even shared how how they are pure st how pure storage flash stack array with with Cisco uh, UCS servers uh, stack uh, really helped their VDI use cases and and running really large workloads uh, of of about eight thousand users uh, without without any problems. Uh, so uh, I recently had uh, the opportunity to validate the uh, pure storage flash stack on, on Citrix share file. Uh, basically what we did is uh, uh, configure the uh, flash stack uh, as the data store for uh, share file data and, uh, and use the Cisco UCS blade servers uh, in it uh, to create virtual machines for uh, share file storage zones controller. Uh, the share file storage zone controller is, is basically a Windows server running IIS uh, and uh, it acts as a controller for moving uh, and retrieving files from on-prem storage uh, and, and talk to the control plane in the cloud. Uh, it, it, the server also contains uh, and saves information about uh, all the data we've stored uh, uh, on the flash stack or, or what we call the customer managed storage zone. Uh, but but that's all in meta, metadata format, so uh, it, it, it's not uh, readable. It, it's very secure. Uh, so so we we kind of uh, configured this in house in our labs, and and we ran several tests. Uh, so so as you can see in the left uh, left hand side, so you can see various browsers, uh, iOS clients, uh, the mobile phones, the Outlook. So 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 share file has. Uh, connectors for uh, for all these applications uh, to, to connect to share file and uh, we, we were able to successfully validate uh, uh, data uh, moving files uh, in and out of flash stack and and uh, the data rates were really really good uh, even for huge uh, huge file transfers so so that that's it uh, from me when it comes to uh, uh, the validation of uh, a flash tag on, on share file. Great, so Kyle, Neil, thank you, you so um, much. No problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so this is just a page with uh, a little bit more information um, regarding flash tag as well as uh, Citrix Ready um, and Pure Storage. You can also see on Cisco's website uh, that Cisco validated design, uh, that 5,000 seat Cisco validated design Obviously, I, I went into maybe 1% of it <laughs> because there's about 600 more pages of it to read. Uh, that's freely available for download on their website. It's in PDF format. So uh, I would encourage folks who are interested to, to take a look at, you know, how uh, we our joint partners recommend um, running large-scale VDI to, to or take a look at that. Um, and then lastly, uh, Pure Storage does have a user conference uh, coming up in San Francisco, which is the city where I'm based out of. So uh, this is going to be June 12th through 14th. There's going to be some great product announcements. Uh, I will actually be doing a, a presentation there on, on this exact uh, subject of the 5,000 seat uh, Citrix deployment there with the, with the, another customer uh, on stage. So you guys, uh, if anyone's in the area or, or wants to come, please, uh, please follow the below link. Um, and then, of course, we'll also be at uh, Citrix Synergy uh, in a couple weeks in Orlando. So if, if anyone's going to that, please feel free to uh, stop by the booth. Right. <laughs> right. That definitely, Kyle. In, in fact, I'll be uh, at Synergy and, and, I'll, and we can definitely catch up. And uh, I, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll meet a lot of joint customers and, and we'll have uh, great stories to listen from them as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, 
looking at the questions. Uh, one one question that I see coming up, and I see this fairly often, is you know, do you see customers using uh, Zen Desktop machine creation services versus provisioning services? You know, with any more, you know, one one over the other. And you know, the the, the real answer is we're we're, we're pretty agnostic. Um, I think both of them work, and both of them work very well. Uh, I would say as a general rule, I do send, tend to see uh, machine creation services used in, you know, say smaller VDI deployments, say 2,000 or 2,500 seats and under, whereas I see uh, provisioning services used uh, in, in deployments 2,500 seats and up. Of course, you know, there are exceptions, but, but that's generally what, um, what I tend to, to see in the field from our customers. Right, uh, that 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 that's great, Kyle. And and we have one uh, coming up for uh, for Amer. Uh, Amer, you did mention uh, uh, eight thousand user workload, and 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 that's a lot of machines uh, machines in your uh, data center. So so how 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 do you handle uh, the patching and uh, the updating of images uh, in, in your current environment? So that and, is. And what's the experience like? So that is uh, one of the sort of challenges we had before because we have large amount of images and if you had to touch an image, uh, it would, you know, have, you know, could have some, some sort of drastic uh, uh, issues and problems for an end user. So when we moved to VDI, we were able to sort of streamline uh, from about 60 images to less than like eight images and, um, you know, a couple of them are just the primary sort of large images. And now we, you know, we are sort of patching them on a regular basis, and and it is since we use provisioning services, it makes it a little bit easier, and and and, and you know we can sustain the performance levels to um, day after uh, the maintenance and patching is done on the local image. All right. So so up, up, updating a single golden image is, is much easier than uh, updating a, a whole lot of virtual machines out there. So so, that, so that's one of the advantages of uh, using the PVS over uh, over the yes. regular Zen app. So, so so that's that's really uh, really good. Yep. Uh, right. So uh, so so one one question I see uh, from the from share filers. Uh, so so what 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 are the storage types that can be used uh, if, if I have to use uh, uh, on-premise data or on-premise storage zones? Uh, so, so, so that's a good question. So uh, share file uh, uh, that does not restrict a, a whole lot, but, uh, but we do, do recommend any uh, NAS, SAN, or DAS array that, that supports uh, CIFS shares. Uh, if, if you have uh, object store in, in the form of uh, AWS, where we have uh, APIs available, uh, so, so you could use uh, that as well. Hey, just this is Kyle. Just to add one thing to that, um, we did not get into it, you know, on this call because this call is, at least from my component, was more focused on Zen Desktop and kind of the more block storage device. But but Pure does have a second product called FlashBlade. Which is more for unstructured data, um, NFS, SIFs, SMB share uh, type of data. Again, it's it's all flash, very fast. I, I will not get into <laughs> all of the advantages of it, uh, but it's a pretty awesome product that went GA earlier this year. Um, so I would encourage customers who are interested in in that type of workload uh, to to look up Flash Blade uh, if they're if they want more information. All right. That that that's uh, that that's perfect, and and uh, we also have uh, the uh, the product available in Citrix City Marketplace. So if you'd like to uh, take a look, uh, please visit uh, citrixcity.citrix.com and and search for Pure Storage, and you should um, you should be able to see all the uh, validated solutions of Pure Storage with, with Citrix available there. All right, so uh, so I, I, I think uh, we we have a few more questions, but we could uh, definitely take them offline. Uh, any any final thoughts from you, Kyle? Uh, no, I, I just really appreciate everybody's time. Um, and you know, one thing I, I don't think we touched on, but I'll, I'll mention it anyway, is one of the advantages of FlashDAC and and Citrix is that you can it does mixed workload types very very well. So 
you know, I would not, I would, I would encourage customers to consider putting, you know, VDI and Sharefile and, you know, say a SQL databases or Oracle databases all on the same flash deck. That's one of the really nice benefits of the platform is that, um, you know, oftentimes we see customers bring in pure storage to, you know, rescue a, a VDI project that's, that's not going so well. Um, but then they'll notice that they have some extra capacity or extra performance and that, and then they can move over, you know, a SQL workload or, or, you know, another workload to it. Um, and it handles those types of applications very well. So, so I just wanted to stress that, you know, Flash Stack is not a point solution. It's really a, a more holistic solution that, that we've engineered to be able to handle multiple workloads across the data center. And I would encourage folks who are looking at it to, to just bear that in mind as they, as they go down their uh, review process. Right. Great, great, great product and, and great insights, Kyle. Thank, thanks very much. Uh, and any final thoughts from you, Amor? Sorry for that. Um, no, I, you know, I think we have, we have gone through this, um, um, you know, um, a few times is that, and I cannot emphasize more about it, that if you are looking for a, you know, a solution that's simple to use, uh, simple to manage, simple to integrate with your existing compute platform, uh, and uh, that comes with a great support and all the stuff, I don't think you can go wrong with uh, Pure. Um, I, I know that uh, we don't regret that, uh, and it's been a good uh, partner for us, um, you know, since we have done BDI, and, you know, and even, uh, you know, uh, last year we even went and we have started to move rest of our uh, uh, block storage from our existing legacy, spinning this to the pure uh, platform, uh, which also is not going to uh, not only going to provide us with great performance, but it reduce our footprint uh, immensely. So, uh, I, to me, that's a takeaway: is that uh, I, I generally, honestly, give even other uh, vendors an example of the sort of a great support and insight that we get from pure that uh, you know other. Uh, uh, companies and teams uh, need to look into and uh, imitate. All right. Th th thanks very much, Emma, for uh, uh, for providing all, all those great insights and, and uh, your success story with us. All right. I, I, thank you I, so I also much for see... your business as well. You're no problem. Right. And, and I see many attendees asking if uh, we'll be sharing uh, the recording of this webinar. Uh, to answer that question, yes. Uh, we are recording the webinar and, and we will uh, share it with all the attendees and, and registrants within, uh, within a day or two. And uh, with that said, we are uh, just about to end today's webinar. Uh, but before that, I wanted to uh, take a moment again and thank uh, Kyle and Amor uh, for making this fantastic uh, presentation and, and sharing great insights with us. And uh, last but not the least, and uh, I wanted to thank uh, each and every one of you who, who uh, took yourself uh, some time out uh, to attend this webinar today uh, in our Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series. And uh, this shall uh, conclude the broadcast today. Thank you.